Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. This is Katie. If you're new here, hi. And if you are back, welcome back. I'm so glad you're back. Happy 2021. Happy New Year. Today, I am hopping on to share a year in review of my completed projects for 2020. So, I'm just going to be covering diamond paintings because that's really the only craft I've been spending time with this year. But as I was pulling them all out to look at them, I'm like, oh wow, I actually have a lot to share. So I have 24 projects, finishes to share with you today. A couple of them are a little bit smaller special drill projects, but it was some of the slightly bigger ones that took me enough time. I thought, I'll count this as a finish. Most of them are canvases though, as you will soon see. So. I, for my very first two kits, actually, I dug and dug and I cannot find them anywhere. I think there's a good chance they're under my five-year-old's bed, but he's asleep right now. <laughs> I have a portfolio under his bed with some um, uncom uncompleted canvases. And I think I might have stuffed the two of those like little canvases in there. So I will insert pictures here either of the canvases when I find them or pictures that I had taken way back when. So my very first canvas is this one right here. It is Sorcerer Mickey. I ordered it from Amazon on March 28th and that my friends was the start of my diamond painting addiction. Like many of you, I saw an ad on my Facebook for several ads really. <laughs> um, usually like time lapses of diamond painting kits and I kept thinking oh that looks so relaxing I bet that would really help with my anxiety and give me something to do during this lockdown because end of March that's when this all started so what did I do I went on Amazon and I typed in diamond painting because especially at that time um I hadn't done all the research yet and discovered about licensing so my first kit this Mickey was 16, sorry, why am I saying 16 by 20? It was 12 by 16 inches, so it was small, little snack size. And then I promptly went back onto Amazon and ordered another kit, probably from the same seller. And you might notice the theme here. The second one is Cars themed, as in the Disney, Disney Pixar movie Cars. Um, and I got that because, especially at the time, my two little boys were super, super into those movies. So I thought, oh, this will be fun. Maybe I'll hang it in their rooms. Obviously, it's not hanging in their rooms because I couldn't find it. So, yeah, that happened. Anyway, this was the same size as a Sorcerer Mickey, 12 by 16 inches. I'm quite sure that that was the um, entire canvas and not the drill field because that's kind of what you get when you go with these cheaper kits. But I had a fun enough experience working on these two projects that I then had started hunting for bigger kits. You guys are going to laugh, I think, because... I very quickly discovered Diamond Art Club and while they had very limited stock at the time, when I saw this one, I thought, sure, I'll go from a 16 by 20 inch to this lovely beauty, something up here. So this is called Worth Melting For. It's from Diamond Art Club. It is a whopping... I believe this one is, yeah, 42 by 125 centimeters. This was my third project <laughs> that I had ever worked on. So let's just say it was a big commitment. This one took me about a month to. I finished it right before my oldest's fifth birthday in May. And as soon as I started working on this one, I remember noticing the quality difference immediately and just being so happy with it and thinking, okay, this is the kind of thing I wanna do. I loved that they were big canvases. I hadn't even yet discovered multi-placing yet. So you guys, I single placed this entire kit, but I loved every second of it. Do you see these sparkles? Oh my gosh. There's so many gorgeous ABs in here. And this is a little wrinkled because it has been rolled up in its box because I don't have a portfolio big enough to fit something this large flat. Interestingly enough, I also broke the cardinal rule of if you roll a completed canvas back up. 
Generally, you hear people say if you're gonna roll a completed canvas back up, you should roll it with the diamonds facing out. I didn't discover that until after I had completed this kit and tucked it away. Didn't really realize I absolutely rolled this with diamonds facing in like that. Uh, but I'm taking a look. Not a single drill has fallen off of this canvas. But while my first two kits were great gateways into the wonderful world of diamond painting, this is what introduced me to high quality kits. I started learning about legally licensed artwork and the importance of that and started to kind of stalk the Instagram community a little bit, but I hadn't created my account over there yet, let alone my YouTube channel. But this was finish number three for the year. Let me get my next one. Finish number four, we have this really adorable kit from Dreamer Designs. So um, this is one of those companies that I discovered pretty quickly after I started diamond painting in the spring. Um, and I knew that they had legally licensed artwork and I was really partial, like many of us probably are, to that starry night style and how beautifully that lends itself to diamond painting. So I had gone on the Dreamer Designs website and um, they didn't have a ton in stock at the time, uh, but I saw this and I thought, oh, that's so cute. And I think Corgi butts are adorable. I can't be the only one because I know that they make like adorable minders and stuff like that. But this was also my first square kit. So my fourth project was a square and this was so confetti heavy that it took me a long time to do. And I remember feeling like I'm never gonna do a square again because this was really overwhelming for me. Um, this is 40 by 50 centimeters. And um, the drill quality was good for the most part. And I really, really enjoy the finish look. So this was number four. Let's pull out my next one. Finish number five for me was another Diamond Art Club. And just as I had been immediately drawn to Mandy Manzano's artwork and gotten someone worth melting for, or Anna from Rosen, um, as soon as I saw that Diamond Art Club carried more of Mandy Manzano's Disney princess artwork, I was stalking that website like nobody's business. <laughs> so I love, 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 love the colors in this beautiful kit. This is um, 42 by 59 centimeters. This was a really good size to work on, especially after um, a square kit that had taken me a while and then the giant um, Mandy Manzano princess banner. This was right up my alley in terms of what I was looking for. So I love the colors. And as always, that sparkle from Diamond Art Club is unbelievable. I love it. And I remember this was the time that I was like, you know, I'll just buy Diamond Art Club <laughs> for the rest of my diamond painting days because I mean, the canvases are soft and the quality was really good. So yeah, this was a really nice one to work on. It's a round, um, so I don't think it took me too terribly long, but I know that I hadn't discovered multi-placing yet. So it, you know, still took a little time to single place, but here is, I don't think I said the name. This is, this. the title of this piece is Beauty and the Beast from Mandy Manzano. Let me pull out my next one. So if by chance, you and I have been connected on Instagram since I started my Instagram account. You might or might not recognize or remember this piece. I, even if you have been following me since then, I, I don't expect you to remember. But this was the first piece that I worked on, or I was working on when I started my diamond painting dedicated Instagram account. I remember thinking, um, okay, so I keep posting about this diamond painting stuff on my regular social media accounts, but I really don't think that my friends and family care <laughs> about seeing this stuff. And I want to, you know, talk about crafting and diamond painting all day, every day, all the tiny little details and minutia. So I thought I'm gonna make a diamond painting Instagram account and I love the color pink. So why don't I start that with a kit that's kind of in my color scheme and a vibe I would want to go for. So this is um, the kit Piano Dream from Diamond Art Club. It is a square kit with the most beautiful, beautiful pink 
and white. And I don't know if they're, I don't think they're, okay, there's like a bluish purple AB. Absolutely beautiful ABs. I love this kit. It has such a special place in my heart because I have been playing piano for 25 plus years. So this just felt like this was so quintessentially me. And I even, I have to admit, I have considered rebuying this kit just for the chance to work on it again, because the colors, the overall feeling and theme of the artwork, I just love it. The detailing is so lovely. And this was one of those times that I was just blown away by rendering. And then I started paying a lot more attention to that sort of thing and feeling like, oh, so this is what the big deal is <laughs> about rendering, how big of a difference it can make. So this was finish number six, I believe is what we're on. The size of this one, this was 71 by 51. So it was a good size. It took me a little while to work on, but gosh, this was a lot of fun to share with the Instagram community while I was just really getting into the swing of diamond painting. So lots of fond, fond memories with this one. All right, let me pull up the next one. For finish number seven of 2020, a little bit of the same <laughs> in terms of style that I gravitated towards. This is the beautiful piece called Wonderland from Diamond Art Club and Mandy Manzano. It's the same size as the Beauty and the Beast kit that I showed you just a minute ago. And once again, just really lovely, lovely colors. This was one of those pieces that I wish that they maybe would have done in a larger version because there are some details like down in here um that these are supposed to be like characters and we don't see that it works okay i think because it's supposed to be more of an impressionistic piece but this was really fun to be my second project to work on on instagram this one just like um, beauty and the beast is 42 by 59 centimeters it's a round drill canvas and I, again, I still had not gotten into multi-placing yet, really. I had tried a little bit and just couldn't get the hang of it and thought, I'm just going to keep single placing because I don't care how long it takes me. I'm doing it to enjoy it. So that's what I did. But <laughs> anyway, yes, so this was finish number seven of 2020. Next up is a piece that, gosh, I still have just the fondest, fondest associations with. This was my first kit from Distracted by Diamonds. Um, I had been following along with Robin's Etsy shop over there for a little while, and none of the pieces had caught my eye quite yet. And then she launched some artwork from the fabulous artist Gretel Lusky. And I have such a soft spot for mermaids. And as soon as I saw this piece, I jumped on it so darn quick because, um, I just love the sass in this character. I love the colors and I love the original artwork. Plus, I was excited at the prospect of getting to try a Distracted by Diamonds kit for the first time. So this is, let's say, 52 by 73 centimeters. It's a square. This is from one of um, Robin's older runs of kits. So this one had a little bit of trouble with the canvas not being as sticky. Um, and, oh, there was another little hiccup with this. But uh, this was also the very first kit that I really ever showed on my channel. I wanna say it was my second or third video here it was a post review of this kit. So again, super fond associations with this because this was one of my first forays into YouTube. I almost don't even wanna go back and watch that video because I feel like I'll make myself cringe, but I think I will because it's always nice to see the changes that you've made and how far you've come in, I guess, good and bad ways. But it's always nice to reflect, right? It's that time of year. But just, I nicknamed her Sassy Ariel because she's got the red hair. And I thought, oh, maybe the seagull is like Scuttle. And just that attitude, I love it. And the rendering and the sparkle even in squares. But the rendering is just fantastic. Distracted by Diamonds is one of my favorite companies to purchase from. Um, 
I love how they legally license their artwork. I love that they try to bring lots of diversity and new artists to the diamond painting community. I think their rendering is fantastic. <laughs> and I love how they've made so many improvements to their kits and take customer feedback to heart. So this was finish number eight. I've lost track now, you guys. I'll check and I'll try to get back to you on the, on the next one. But yeah, this is my next finish of 2020. So next up is another lovely piece from Mandy Manzano and Diamond Art Club. Can you tell I have a little bit of a type? I really <laughs> gravitated towards the size and style of artwork. This one is called The Princess and the Frog. It's 42 by 59 centimeters. It's a round. And if there's a shade of green, it is in this piece and is always like really Diamond Art Club with your round drill sparkle the best it has some really amazing ab's i can't get over it i really um i love the cute little frog here i love the contrast and color here on the side and just that dress oh it's so beautiful this was really really fun to work on and i enjoyed it a whole heck of a lot so um oh and i forgot to mention with my last kit the kit before this one the Distracted by Diamonds Mermaid. That was when I made myself made myself learn to multi-place. That kit took me forever because I was forcing myself to learn to multi-place and get the hang of it, but it paid off. And I think I got this kit done in less than a week because I was multi-placing rounds. So it just went really zippy. But anyway, just wanted to update you guys on that. This was finish number nine of 2020. Next, I'd love to show you guys some of my snack and special drill projects, snack size and special drill projects that I worked on this past year. Um, about this time after I finished my last kit, we were going into, I think, September, and there was an event that was running at the time called Smash in the Specials. And so I had ordered some snack and special size kits from, I think, Fan Cells. And... Um, had seen a couple of people post this idea of getting a large scrapbook, like a pre-done scrapbook, and using that to store their special and snack size kits in. So I decided to do that. <laughs> so this one here, I did go ahead and count as a finish because it took me a little while um, and has kind of a lot to it. Just some cute dolphins. These holes are because this was originally intended to go on a light. Not a, I almost said a clock, not a clock, a light, but I decided like I'm not actually going to use it for that. So I'd rather tuck it in with my other um, snack and special drill paintings. I do have a peacock bookmark and a charm. I didn't count either of those as finishes because, because they are smaller, but I will still show you this one because these drills are beautiful. So um, I didn't necessarily work on all the in this particular order that I'm showing them to you. I just thought I would show these all to you at once and just kind of insert them here about the time that I actually was working on special drill projects. So this guy here, I can, no, I can pull it out, but was just this really, really cute dragon with these like big, cute special drills. So sparkly, love, love, love it. And then this unicorn, Again, these are mostly those crystal drills, but then this one also had these stars, star special shape drills that I really loved. And then this was a snack size kit. It's a round. This is one of those stock photos you see around quite a lot. And it was just, this was one that I used to tide me over between kits and events, and I thought it was really fun to work on. It was a whole lot of color blocking. So I wanna say I did this in just a couple of sittings. And then this one here, I have really, really fond associations with. This one's from Crystal Canvas Art Designs. And this was one that I actually worked on with my mom. When my mom was out here in October of 2020, um, she was like, so I know you've gotten really into this craft diamond painting and I'm really curious about it. Um, do you have anything that maybe I could work on or try out? And I was like, do I? <laughs> because of course they have a stash. So we, I showed her a couple of different ones and we decided to work on this one together. We just kind of each worked on a, 
a half and we used a couple of pretty placer um, pens from the Etsy shop pretty placers um, and that was just really beginner friendly for her and she enjoyed this a lot though she did comment and say I don't know my eyes might not be <laughs> strong enough for working on something up close like this all the time but I thought well you know she's done some cross stitching and other crafting so this is something she might potentially do just as a another craft especially now that she's retired but lots and lots of fond associations with that one and yeah that was it for my snacks and specials so we're going to get back to the big canvases here and show you what else i finished in 2020. so finish number 15 of 2020 actually wins the spot for my favorite diamond painting i've ever worked on and finished i am obsessed with just about everything about this beautiful piece so this is the beautiful Dawn from the company Distracted by Diamonds from the artist Geneva Bowers. Um, the size on this one is, let's see, like 52 by 74. There are round drills. This kit was a dream to work on. And even just pulling it back out makes me so stinking happy. I love it. I love the colors. I am obsessed with this whole effect and the sparklers in her hair. Well, the ABs in her hair, not the sparklers. Her face, her makeup, the shading, the rendering. If you heard me do a post review of this kit, you know I was gushing. I loved this kit. <laughs> um, this was, again, from Distracted by Diamonds, and this was shortly after they did a big revamp of their kits. And this was a big improvement, in my opinion, from the Mermaid kit that I had worked on earlier in the year. And this just had me sold on everything Distracted by Diamonds <laughs> from there on out. This is, oh my gosh, you guys. I love this piece here. I'll try to fitter and frame there. Like these colors are unreal. And the rendering is, my gosh, is that not some of the most beautiful rendering that you've ever seen? <laughs> I love, love, love this one. I could really just stay on this kit all day, but I won't because I have nine more kits to show you guys. So this beautiful piece was my uh, number 15 my 15th finish of 2020. So let's pull out the next one. Space for Reflection from Diamond Art Club was my 16th finish of 2020. This is from the artist Chuck Pinson. It was actually the first Chuck Pinson piece that I ever worked on and my first landscape as well. Um, I had decided to work on this one for the Chuck Along event in September, October, it's terrible. I can't remember. I want to say it was in September. So I thought, well, I've, you know, I've seen lots of people work on Chuck Pins since so I'd love to try it myself. I picked this one because I loved the fall feeling of it and living in California. I don't get much of that fall weather that I really loved in the Midwest. And so I decided to get this one. I didn't realize when I purchased it just how many grays are in it. So a lot of this was a little bit monotonous for me to work on. I came out of this kit feeling like, I don't know if I even want to work on a landscape again, but I had already ordered a Chuck Pinson, another Chuck Pinson to work on um, that was really Christmassy themed. So I thought, do I try to return that or just, you know, just take a break and come back to it and see if I feel like doing it then. Um, because like I said, this just, for whatever reason, I was a little, I was surprised at how much I didn't quite enjoy working on this as much as I was expecting, which is okay. Maybe I just need to learn to set my expectations a little more realistically. And you know, there was other life stuff going on at the time as well. So take that with that grain of salt. But um, this was a round drill canvas. It was a little on the bigger side, 74 by 55. It felt big, <laughs> but, um, I got to finish it as part of the check along and I'm glad that I did. So uh, let me pull up the next one. Number 17 
for 2020 was my mystery swap canvas with my friend Jacqueline uh, over on Instagram. Her name is Diamond Art Sparkles. We had seen a couple of people do mystery swap kits um, over there and thought we wanted to go ahead and give it a try ourselves because it looked like a lot of fun. So how that worked is that we uh, gave each other lists of things that we liked and don't liked and our tastes and you know color schemes we gravitated towards and that sort of thing. And then we each went on to the Ever Moment store on AliExpress and picked out a kit that we thought the other person would like. And just when we purchased it, we had it shipped directly to the person to the other person and noted in there like to you say like remove image or something similar. Um, and that way, when you get it, it has the white opaque paper over it so you don't see the rendering. There's no thumbnail at the top corner and there was no thumbnail on the inventory sheet. So nothing to give away what the image is. And then we sectioned it off into, I want to say 24 sections. And um, we would choose each day, we would number them and then choose each day which number we would work on. We either have people vote on it or we'd pick for each other or whatnot to try to preserve the mystery till the end. So I really didn't know until the last few sections really what I thought this was going to be because every section felt like a surprise. This is my first kit I worked on from Ever Moment. Um, it's a square drill kit and the square drills were really excellent quality. Jacqueline and I both tried to reverse image search the images we ended up choosing for each other so that we were hope we, that we were doing our best to try to get copyright free artwork and not stolen artwork um but yeah this was fun to work on i'd be curious to try another ever moment sometime of a stock photo or something similar so loved how whimsical this one was and the colors and oh my gosh that rainbow just was was beautiful so that was that finish for the year by this point, we were getting to October. So the, my 18th finish of 2020, I almost said 2019. No, I don't wanna go back because that means we still have 2020 ahead of us. Um, <laughs> my next finish was Halloween Kitty from Distracted by Diamonds and the artist Puffy Gator. This kit was obviously in honor of Halloween and it, it was from an older run of kits. And this one in particular, I feel like I can already see some of the popping, a little bit of popping drills. The 310 in this kit, which as you can see is like all through here, those drills were so finicky. There was a lot of trash in them. This kit gave me a lot of, a, a bit of trouble, <laughs> honestly. Uh, but there was some color blocking, so I was able to help it kind of move along a little bit. Um, it's a square drill kit, though still quite sparkly. And this was 52 by 54 centimeters. And I love Puffy Gator's artwork. I love how this one turned out. It's so stinking cute. The effect of like the feathering and the lighting over here is gorgeous. Again, Distracted by Diamonds nailing the rendering. Um, the colors were really dark. And I, as soon as I finished this one, I thought I wanna work on something lighter and happier. <laughs> but again, I really did enjoy working on this kit. I'm glad that I did. And it was fun to do something that was very on theme for Halloween. Speaking of on theme for Halloween, I could not resist get, getting one of Diamond Art Club's Halloween releases in 2020, especially because it's our Randall Sp Spangler Dragons, which as many of you know, is one of my favorite things. This kit was a dream to work on, especially after lots of square drills with some problem drills. This kit worked up really quickly for me. Um, I really just, I love this artwork. I love the, like the effect of like the lighting. I thought they did a really nice job with, with the fire on everything. This kit was a little bit of an experiment and needed some doctoring though. Um, I, along with my friend Jacqueline, we spent quite a lot of time. We recharted um, the letters and the marshmallows on this bag. Originally it was like really blocky and straight across and the word mellows was misspelled and it just, it kind of stood out, especially because like the letters on these two things kind of follow the curve of what they're on. 
So we changed that up. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It was a team effort <laughs> along with that. Um, in the original charting for this piece, our little dragon over here doesn't actually have a hand. It just cuts off in the green and there's no like wand connecting here. It looks like he's just holding a stick that ends like right here. Um, and then like this arm was awkwardly skinny, like someone had chopped it off. So Jacqueline and I, again, spent a lot of time brainstorming together and recharting that to give him his hand back and make it a little bit more true to the original artwork. I love the effect of the skies up here with the haunted house in the background. Diamond Art Club has um, a rendering style that you can spot from a mile away. <laughs> um, it's very clean and crisp, and I thought that it lended itself really, really well to this kit. And of course, all those ABs that you guys saw sparkling, like the green ABs and, oh, yes, of course, uh, my friend, again, Jacqueline and I, this was a teamwork kit. We both worked on this at the same time. She had ordered some sparkly brown ABs from um, Tima over at DP with Sparklers and sent me half the bag and we both added them into our hot chocolate just to give it a little bit of extra sparkle as well. So that was fun to work on for Halloween. Next up, Finish number 20, the absolutely stunning piece, The Stars Who Listen from Margaret Morales and DIY Moon Shop or Die Moon Shop. This was my very first kit that I got to work on from DIY Moon Shop. Um, I had ordered it late summer and it took a long time to get to me, but it was worth the wait. I ordered it with the special treatments. I've shown this off on my channel before and shared a post review on it. So I will link that below if you're interested in seeing some more um, in detail thoughts on this kit and what it was like to work on because I did run into some hiccups. Um, but I am thrilled with the overall effect of the rendering. I think it's really stunning. I feel like the special treatment, these special drills, particularly the ones that go in the stars, I really, really feel like they enhance the canvas beautifully. Um, I had ordered a round drill kit for them for my first order, just to try them out and see if I would like that better. Also, the round drills from DIY Moon Shop are less expensive than the squares, but I really, really loved working on this kit a lot. I did get it in the largest size, but to be honest, I can't remember what the exact size was off the top of my head. I want to say 50 by 70, but um, I decided to get it in the largest size because I just wanted as much detail and as much of this gorgeousness as I could get at once. And I loved it so much that I promptly put in another order. <laughs> so loved, loved, loved this in spite of the hiccups that I had. And this was one of my favorite finishes of 2020 for sure. So let me go ahead and grab the next one. Hope Runs Deep was a kit that I actually got to finish with you guys in one of my whipping chats. And this I sort of think of as my dark horse for the year because initially I went into this again, coming off of the fall Chuck Pinson landscape that I had done. I was like, oh no, I really hope that this Christmassy kit isn't gonna feel tedious and I hope that I enjoy it. Oh my gosh, I loved, loved, loved working on this kit. One of my favorite surprises was the color in the sky. I, well, I even went back and checked. The original artwork that is on Diamond Art Club's website, the colors are muted in that original piece. I thought that this piece was going to have a ton of white in it. And it had almost none, even in the church building, there's layers of, sorry, you guys, um, like a light purple with a white that give it just a really beautiful overall glimmery, snowy effect. The ABs in this kit were incredible. I love the ones in the church. And I loved this kit. I know I keep saying that, but I, this is one of my, um, favorite like diamond art club renderings of artwork. I was so impressed to see how they rendered really small objects, but still gave you a really clear idea of what they were supposed to be. 
like this little red barn up on the hill. Down here, there's a cardinal in the tree that they made with literally like eight drills. And I feel like that effect is certainly there, especially from viewing distance. We have a little dog here, we have birds. I just thought that DAC knocked it out of the park with this piece. I enjoyed it so much more than I was expecting in the best way. And now I'm much more open to working on Chuck Pinson's and more landscapey pieces again. So I really enjoyed this. This was finish number, I haven't said a number in a minute, um, finish number 21. So just three more to go. In keeping with the wintry and Christmas theme, this was my next finish of 2020. This is Starry Night Santa from Diamond Art Club. It's a little bit on the smaller side. Let me see what it says under the washi. 40 by 42 by 57, which felt small to me compared to some of the other pieces I've worked on this year. This was so fun to work on. It really put me in the Christmas spirit. It is square drills, but there's a, a good amount of color blocking, so it worked up pretty quickly. They did not skimp on the ABs in this piece at all. There's just like a handful, a big handful of ABs. They just dropped in the snow right there. I love how they rendered that Santa. And um, I thought that this the star was just really beautiful and sweet. I just sort of, I loved the overall theme of it. It just felt serene and put me in the Christmas spirit after a really rough and weird year where I really was not ending it feeling particularly Christmassy. So it was really fun to get to work on this one and fun to have as my third to last finish of 2020. Two to go. This one you may very well recognize because I did just share a post review um, on this kit. Uh, and this is Diana from Treasure Studios Art. This is 60 by 70 centimeters. It's a round drill kit. And um, I had ordered it over the summer and just had the chance to work on it. I worked on it on and off through November and December and finished it up just in this last last week of the year. So this was um, one of those kits I was really excited to get to because it was part of my, I wanna try a kit from each company that offers legally licensed artwork and high quality kits. So I really enjoyed getting to work on this one. If you watched my post review, you'll know that I did have some hiccups, but nothing that really stopped me from wanting to purchase from them again. So I haven't placed another order with them yet, but I am definitely planning to this year. I'd love to see what maybe a different style of artwork would look like from their company. But, um, oh, the artist for this piece is Maria Abagno, and I love her artwork. And I love that Treasure Studios art is working with her as well and i loved a lot of how a lot of things about how this piece turned out i love the level of detail in areas like the crown and in her hair a little popping drill there um and then in the moon i thought they did a lovely job as well and gosh what a beautiful beautiful piece of artwork i'm really tickled that i got to um that this got to be one of the pieces that I finished in 2020. And I am looking forward to trying another from TSA at some point in 2021. Last, but certainly not least, my 24th and final finish of 2020. This adorable kit is from Mary's Diamonds. It's called Happy Whale and from it's from the artist Alice GH is her Instagram handle. This is a little bit smaller compared to most of my other finishes this year at 40 by 60 centimeters. It's a round drill canvas and oh, so sparkly. <laughs> um, when I put this video up, I don't think you will quite have seen the post review for this kit. So I'm not gonna go into tons of, of detail on that now, but Mary's Diamonds has done a major revamp um, recently, here just at the end of 2020, where they've changed quite a lot about their canvases, including switching over to poured glue, changing their rendering software, 
And I believe they also changed their drill. They might've changed their drill manufacturers, but I kind of hope they didn't because the drill quality on this kit was phenomenal. <laughs> it was so, so good. Like better than Diamond Dark Club, which in my mind is saying something. So I really love the colors in this kit. This is one that I had ordered early in the summer, not too long after I started diamond painting and joined the Instagram community. But just for whatever reason, I either wasn't feeling it or just didn't quite have time to work it in um, sooner. But this was fun to work on. I worked on it in the last week of 2020 and finished it on New Year's Eve, like an hour before midnight. So <laughs> it counts as a finish of 2020, right? So um, yes, it was really fun to get to work on this adorable piece as well. So you guys, thank you for watching this year in review of 2020. To be honest, as I was pulling out each of these canvases to show you guys, it was like a trip down memory lane and I'm kind of blown away because as I pull each of them out, especially the larger ones, I'm thinking, wow, I completed 24 canvases in eight months. I started in April, so nine months. In nine months, 24 canvases, some of which were small or snack size, but easily the majority of them were a good size and a lot of them were done single placing. So I am just tickled that I have this fun portfolio, literally a big old portfolio bag is what I keep these in, um, of these really beautiful pieces. That was a really, a lot of fun for me to pull out and look through with you guys. And just, again, remembering what it was like when I was working on those pieces, especially those early ones, that was a lot of fun. So I'd love to hear from you guys. You can share a little mini review of your 2020 projects in the comments. If you have a channel and you've done a year in review, please feel free to share that in the comments. I don't normally love like lots of self-promotion comments, but at the same time, I love getting to find out about other creators and connect with you. So please feel free to share in the comments of this video if you've done a year in review, because I'd love to see that and see what you've been working on. Did any of you work on any of the same projects that I did? And what were your thoughts? Because that's always fun for me when I find other people that have worked on the same kits that I have. So, and if nothing else, if you've kept track of how many projects you've completed, I'd love to know how many you complete it and not in a competition way, but just cause it's fun to go, look at how many kids that our community has completed. But that's just, I don't know, I'm weird. That's just me. I like numbers and stuff like that. <laughs> but anyway, thank you again for watching. Um, I hope that you all had a safe and happy new year celebration and a wonderful start to your 2021 so far. I'm really excited for what the year has in store and um, I can't wait to get to do it alongside all of you. So I will let you guys go. I hope you have a wonderful week. If you enjoyed this, please hit the thumbs up to like the video before you click away. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing and hanging out here and even hit the bell to be notified whenever I share new videos. And I have lots of fun ideas in store for the year. So I hope that you will subscribe and join us here. I appreciate all of you so much. I will talk to you again next time. Have a good one, guys. Bye.